in order for God to bless you, you have to you have to have something. You know, and 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 that means I guess I guess what I'm saying is God can only bless you by your faith and your effort. That's the only way he can bless you. By your faith and your effort. Now, because of his grace, he gives us so many things that we don't even we don't ask for, we don't thank him for. You know, we don't even have on the list you know, oftentimes, you know, many of us have health. We never thank him for it. We get another opportunity to wake up the next day. We never thank him for it. We take so many small things because of his grace. We just take for granted. Like it's just supposed to pop off for us just like that. Okay. Including that, what all this wonderful things he does us. And he blesses us even far beyond our wildest dreams. I'm talking about myself now and a lot of you listening without us confiding or conferring in him. He still watches over us, watches over us. I'm talking to all of us now. Here is what you get blessed on through your faith and your efforts. I mean, he really gives you give him something to work with is what I'm saying. He's going to do certain things for us automatically. Because he just loves us. He automatically does things for us that we take so for granted that a lot of people are not experiencing because their time is up or whatever. I don't know the reason, but whatever the case. But he does so many things for us automatic. Imagine what could happen to you if you just gave him a little bit to work with. You ever thought about that? Suppose this idea that's been burning on the inside of you Suppose you just started it today. See, and don't wait to start an idea when you can figure it all the way through because you'll never get started. You know, it, it, it cripples so many people because they think of how to start their business. Then they look all the way down the road of the loans they're going to need and they don't know nobody and they credit bad. So they stop. They never start. What would happen had you ever thought if you just started? Do the part of the business that you could do and ask God to lead you and guide you to the next step. That that thing called faith, the belief in things that you cannot see. Suppose you just started out on faith. You just stepped out the water, stepped out the boat and stood on the water just on faith. Seeing that is rough, but just believing that he would take care of you. Just believing that he would get you through. Just believing that he would lead you to the next step start if you just start it man you would then give God something to put his finger on and to bless people say to me all the time man man Steve it seems like everything you do work man I, do you know what it is really I just lose the fear of failing and I start I don't know how to do all of this <laughs> come on man if I could have told you 10 years ago, or it, there's no way I could have told you I'd be who I am today. But if anyone had come to me and said, Steve, in 10 years, you will be doing this, that, this, that, and the other. They will recognize you here. You will get this recognition. You'll get this award, and you'll be living like this. I'd have just looked at them like they was crazy. I really would have, man. It's not that I didn't have the faith. It's just that in my imagination, I didn't see it. I've always believed in God. I just didn't see things for myself. See, I didn't open myself up to what God had for me. I was just living my life based on what I could see for me. When I stopped worrying about what I could see for me and started allowing God to do what he could do for me, it changed my whole existence because I found out that God's plan was way better than mine. But you got to start something. You got to give God something to put his finger on that Midas touch where it turned into something. You got to let your imagination go. You got to let your imagination fly as wild as it can fly without being constricted by the confines of where you live, 
what color you are and what sex you are and how much money you make and what your degree say. You got to let your imagination fly beyond that. You got to go for it. You got to step out on faith and you got to go for it. Oh, and did I mention you got to pray? Don't want to leave that out. Then you got to seek understanding. Man, read Proverbs. Proverbs is a great book to start with. I don't, you know, I guess other people got other. I'm just telling you about me. Man, there's probably some better places to start. I don't know. Proverbs was the start for me. The book of wisdom and understanding that helped develop my thought process, which helped me become fairly successful. Proverbs teaches you everything you need to know. And if you can't read the King James Version, get you one of them translated Bibles. What difference does it make? Long as you hear what he's saying to you. Oh, and did I mention, don't forget to pray. And then take the idea, the business, the journey you want to embark on and break it down inch by inch. Anything's a cinch. Just start with the piece that you can do. Okay, you don't know how you're going to get the loan when it's time for the loan. What part can you can you design the business card? Can you can you get the phone line put in? Can you can you make a YouTube video and post it? Can you start telling people that you're associated with this is what you do now? You can start somewhere. You can get a gig somewhere doing something. Somebody will pay you for the service right now. And then simplify it. Take it and break it down to the lowest common denominator. Quit trying to figure it all out. Simplify it. What can I do now? That's just like breaking it down, but simplify it, man. Get it simple for you. Oh, I can't figure this out. It's too complex. It's too difficult. It's too many levels. Quit tripping on that. Do the part you can do. Do what you can do. But start, man. Just get started today. Stop delaying it. Every time you put it off, you seem further away from it, don't you? Why won't you start? Let your imagination go. Open it up. You know, if you can't imagine, God sure can. Einstein said it one time. He said that imagination is everything. It's the preview to life's coming attractions. Do you know that everything we do, somebody imagined it? But do you know when they imagined it, somebody laughed at them? Man, I'm going to make a car that you can sit on it and automatically drive and the wheels will roll. Okay, here we go. We all ride in cars. Man, I'm going to fly. I'm going to make something that will take people far away in the air. People board flights every day. You got to go, man. You just have to go. Never, never wait on the right time because the right time ain't ever coming. All that, when we get my ducks lined up in the row? No, you won't. No, you won't. Because as you have aspirations, you got to understand that the devil understands your aspirations too. The devil's job is to rob you of your destiny. See, devil, he only, he only has one job. To rob you of what God intended for you to be. That's his only job. So he has a lot of people that work for him full time. They're called haters. And they at work all the time. And you all experience with them too. And so what you got to do is, when you have these ideas of greatness, you got to go forward. Because it's not going to be a right time. Just go. Just go. Go jump. Take a chance. I walked in a comedy club October 8th, 1985. Had never been in a comedy club, had only heard about him. I was writing jokes for this comedian. This girl told me, you're writing his jokes? I said, yeah. She said, why don't you do them yourself? I said, how, where? She said, a comedy club. I said, what's that? She said, it's a comedy club. She said, why are you writing them jokes for him? You ought to tell him yourself. She said, I'm gonna pick you up Tuesday and take you. We drove 45 minutes from Cleveland to Hilarity's Comedy Club. I signed up for the following week. Nine guys went up, I was just staring at them. She said, how come you're not laughing? Because I was just staring at them. Because every joke they told, I knew what they were going to say. And deeper than that, I knew what they should have said. And then when the 10th person came up, they called his name and he wasn't there. He got scared and left. So they said, we're going to go to next week's list. Is Steve Harvey still here? 
I'd never been on stage in my life as a stand-up. I ran up on stage. Long story short, they had a clap off. I won $50 amateur night. For 45 minutes, I cried all the way home. That girl said, why are you crying? It ain't but $50. I said, no, you don't understand. I was born tonight. I said, I'm going to go back. But this is what I'm going to do the rest of my life. October 9th, the next morning, I went to my job and quit my job with $50. $50. I just quit. Ex-wife left me. Mother-in-law, boy, I cost him here. Made $3,000 first year in business, $5,200 the second year, $7,300 the third year. Became homeless, lost everything I ever owned, lived in a car for three years. I kept telling them jokes. My father was the only one who believed in me. My mother, my brothers, sisters, all my friends, man, get out of that, man. You, you ain't making no money. You can't tell no jokes. I just kept on. You got to jump. If you ever planning on soaring, you're going to have to jump. Now, I don't suggest you jumping like I did. That ain't for the faint of heart. But if you don't do it now, when you going to do it?